What's up, everybody? Kev here. Today we're talking retro arc, retro arch, whatever you want to call it or however you want to pronounce it today. We're talking about that, and it's coming to Xbox One. Let's get into it right after this. Those of you who don't know what it is, I'm sure most of you, 99% of you probably do know what it is if you're watching this video, but I'll just go over a brief description of it and how it works, and maybe you're not uh, knowing of some new updates and things that are to come, so I'll just go over a brief description of all of it. So as you can see right from the site, it can run on the usual platforms like Windows, Mac, Linux, but it can stand alone in that it can support far more platforms beyond just that. They support operating systems that not even Microsoft and Apple themselves support anymore, such as Mac OS X on PowerPC, Macs, and RetroArch being available on Windows OSSs as far as back as Windows 95. On top of all that, RetroArch also runs on iOS, Android, tablets, phones, as well as on game consoles like PS3, PSP, PS Vita, Wii, Wii U, Switch, and more. The current stable version is 1.75. And as you can see here, we have a list of the supported platforms. Of course, like we had mentioned above, you have all the Windows, you have Raspberry Pi, all that. But look what we have right here, a Xbox One logo with the title description coming soon. If we head over to Lib Retro's Twitter, you'll see we've bit the bullet and we'll commit to releasing an Xbox One port of RetroArch for early 2019. Might require developer activation and might not be available on the store, but will be possible for anyone with an Xbox to obtain nonetheless. And there is a way to do it. The way to do it when it comes out has already been presented to us. I'll go over a brief description of that as well. So it says, how does developer mode work? Xbox One has two modes. There's retail mode and then there's developer mode. So basically in retail mode, the console is in the state that any customer or user of an Xbox One console would use. You can play your games, run your apps as a user, all that, etc., etc. But in developer mode, you can develop software for the console, but you cannot play retail games or run retail apps. Developer mode can be enabled on retail Xbox One consoles. After developer mode is enabled, you can switch back and forth between retail and developer modes. So basically, if you want, you can go ahead and play your regular Xbox One games, and you can do that on your regular retail mode. But if you wanted to head on to your Retro Arc or Retro Arch, once again, however you pronounce it, once you want to head on over to that, you're able to go ahead and quickly switch to a dev mode, and that dev mode is going to allow you to play that, and then back and forth, switch it back and forth. It shouldn't be a big hassle or a big problem. I'm going to show you how it works. So to activate developer mode on your retail Xbox One, you're going to start your Xbox One console, search for and install the dev mode activation app from the Xbox One store. Once you've searched that and you clicked on it, you're going to launch the app. It says note the code displayed in the dev mode activation app. You're going to go ahead and go to partner Microsoft this link right here. I'm not going to read the whole link out loud. Then you're going to sign into the partner center with your account credentials. Enter the activation code displayed in the dev mode activation app. You have a limited number of activations associated with your account. After developer mode has been activated, partner central will indicate you have used one of the activations associated with your account. So this may run into an issue. I'm not necessarily sure if you get a new code every time. Because if you're going to want to switch back from dev to retail, dev to retail, you may only have a limited amount of times you can switch back and forth. So that may be an issue that is probably being worked on right now. We're not sure exactly how that's going. Or I should say I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work out. But I'm sure they have something going on. I'm sure they're well aware of this. Um, they're not oblivious to this fact. Then you're just going to go ahead. You're going to enter that activation code. Click and agree and activate. This will cause the page to reload and you'll see your device populate in the table. Terms for the Xbox One developer mode activation program agreement can be found here. Of course, everything is in the link in the description down below if you want to check anything out. Maybe you want to see how all of this works and maybe you're getting ready to get excited for the drop of RetroArch. After you've entered your activation code, your console will display a progress screen for the activation process. After activation has completed, open the dev mode activation app and click switch and restart to go to developer mode. Note that this will take longer than usual. You will see the screen right here presented on my screen as you can see. Once that is all done, you are on developer mode and you can do as you please. Keep note, like I said, you cannot play your regular retail Xbox games on developer mode, but you can switch back and forth. 
but there may be a little hiccup in the sense that you have so many times to go to developer mode, but we're gonna see how that plays out. But if you wanna switch between retail and developer mode, this is how you're gonna do it. After developer mode has been enabled on your console, use Dev Home to switch between retail mode and developer mode. To learn more about starting and using Dev Home, links are in the description below, of course. And then to switch to retail mode, open Dev Home under Quick Actions, select Leave Dev Mode. This will restart your console in retail mode. To switch to developer mode, use the Dev Mode Activation app. Open the app and select Switch and Restart. This will restart your console in developer mode. So you're going to be able to jump back and forth, developer, retail, developer, retail, okay? And you're going to see this screen right here. And that's basically a simple, quick explanation of how you're going to be able to switch back and forth and how you're going to be able to use RetroArch on your 2019 Xbox One if that's what you're using right now. But I have everything in the description down below of everything that Lib Retro linked and all the information you're gonna need. As you can see, it has so many different supporting uh, devices and systems that it can be loaded onto. And I'm very excited that it's coming to the Xbox One next. I'm gonna go over it for the last couple of minutes, show you some of their new updates, what cores they're running right now. And like I said, maybe not everyone has already heard about this. And there are of course some people who haven't heard about everything. So we're gonna show them some of the cool stuff that they got going on over here at RetroArch and some of the cores and systems that you could run and pretty much emulate your backups of. Of course, you have cross-platform. RetroArch can run on all the other devices, like I said. You have next frame response time, impeccable latency results, highly configurable, advanced settings interface lets you tweak every possible option about how the game runs and works. You have a joypad auto configuration, which is huge. Basically, you plug in your joypad and you can go ahead and it's gonna recognize it and it's ideal for multiplayer games. When a friend comes through, you have achievements, net play, you can host or join network gaming sessions. Uh, of course, record and stream your ROMs and backups of your games, maybe some old obscure titles that you won't be able to get your hands on that you want to stream. That is there. You have cores below. We have, let's see right here, what's their latest cores? We have the Dolphin, of course. Dolphin isn't that new at all by any means. Dolphin is a Wii and GameCube emulator. It's been ported to Lib Retro. You have Citra, which is a in progress but it completely works not all titles of course but for the 3ds it looks absolutely great i've done videos on it before you have red dream which is the sega dreamcast you have a open lara it's an early tomb raider engine for the retro arc and then of course melon ds it is a work in progress nintendo ds and same boy is a highly accurate game boy and game boy color you have the px68k it's a sharp x68000 emulator and so much more, guys. As you can see, there is news articles. There's so much more information that can be figured out. It's a highly, highly, highly editable and customized application. You can run whatever you want on it. Um, so many things work flawlessly on it, and there's so many extra options and different things you can add. And a lot of times you have options to even make the quality look a little better um, or make it look however you want. But yeah, I wanted to put this information out to you guys. I want to let you know it is coming to Xbox One. This is how you're going to be able to do it. So the day that it drops, you know how to go ahead and load it up on your console. And of course, I'll keep it updated on this article and news from Lib Retro on what they're going to do when it drops, all that more. But I wanted to give you that leg up, that head start, and let you know this is how you're going to be able to do it. And it's going to be a quick and easy snap snap and you're ready to go. So I hope this video did help. Stay tuned for a message from the sponsor after this video, especially if you want to definitely get involved in any kind of online uh, ROM downloading. If you don't have your backups or something like that, definitely want to keep tuned for the sponsor. Do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I drop weekly content. I do not miss a week. I keep you updated on gaming tech, streaming, movies, TV, all that, so much more, anything around the tech and gaming industry, I got you covered, entertainment as a whole. This is Kev, and I'm out. I always suggest a VPN when it comes to streaming and messing with online videos and movies, and I want to tell you about an awesome deal right now. It's something that I'm personally using. There's a couple VPNs that I personally enjoy, use, and suggest out of the world of companies of VPNs. 
and I highly suggest them. It's one of the world's fastest VPN services, complete internet privacy, freedom to grow your business, prevent geotrack, you have awesome VPN performance speeds, and zero logging of all your activities, meaning nothing you do is ever tracked. It's been seen on the Huffington Post, Lifehacker, Yahoo Tech, Wired, and more. It is a steal. Links are in the description down below. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Drop a comment below. Let's get a conversation going. Shoot me a like if you can. Thanks, everybody. I hope to catch you on the next video. This is Kev, and I'm out.